This podcast is sponsored by Terraform Development is an engineering and architectural design studio company located in Flagstaff, Arizona. Co-owner and founder Eddie Kalnintua supports the Hopi way of life and supports the next generation, including hiring Hopi professionals, individuals like Dr. Brianne Laban from the village of Tewa. Contact Terraform at 928-864-5022, extension 1, or you can email them at info at T-E-R-R-A, the number 4, O-R-M dot com, or visit their website at www.terra, the number 4, O-R-M dot com to learn more about Terraform development. They can design your next home, manage your next construction project, or fly their latest drone equipment to get aerial views of your project. Also sponsored by Strong Ones is dedicated to exposing cultural traditions of running that exist within many cultures and tribes worldwide through running apparel. Strong Ones is an individually owned business supporting cultural running traditions and supporting local organizations within the Hopi Reservation. They can be found at strongones.myshopify.com. Again, that's strongones.myshopify.com. They are also on Facebook at Strong Ones 15. Yeah. You're now listening to the Carl and J-Man Saves the World podcast. I am your co-host, the Fight Star, Fight Diamond Chef, J-Man. And with me, as always, is the one and only Carl. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to uh, um, Carl and J-Man Save the World podcast. Uh, we are recording in this beautiful downtown Kikotsmovi, Arizona. And Peace Academy Studios. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you big, for... Big, for... big shout out to our, I guess, uh, our, our studio sponsors. Yeah. The Peace Academy Center. Yeah. And I think they're going to be reopening up their school. Yeah. If you haven't seen our ad yeah. that we uh, pushed for them on our Facebook page. Yeah. So, so call that number on there again. Thank you for housing us, uh, Peace Academy. Mm-hmm. And so our, our second episode, the episode that we did last week, I think is probably our um, our uh, fastest growing, most listened to episode within the short within the period of time that it's that it's been on. Oh on the air. man, no kidding! I mean, like the the way that we uh, presented ourselves with that whole thing, like that. I mean, it was. It was something remarkable. That was so fun, I think, just to have other folks in here with us and uh, doing some of the, uh, I, I guess, the overview of Hopi society and especially, you know, the ladies, the ladies that were uh, giving us their insights on how they grew up. I really like how they made you nervous and uh, caused you to go on about that really long story about and, your soul's potato. And, and any of my sisters that listen to that whole thing, you know, no offense to your bread making or anything like that. I mean... It's all fun and games. Just don't, you know, don't skin the coyote here. So speaking of sisters, <laughs> did uh, you update on your sister, Courtney? Did she come in? Uh... <laughs> yes, actually, she uh, commented on Facebook. She said she has knives and, and access ready for, uh, you know, to skin whatever's left on my hide here. So <laughs> she's like, I'm going to keep up to Carl right now. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was such a fun episode and we it was got, we, we got a great response for that episode and you know i i think that a big reason why folks enjoy listening to our podcast is because of the humor uh the laughter that we create with you know just kind of discussing uh, a lot of the things that a lot of folks out here on the reservation have experienced and i think that the reason why we chose to deliver this podcast in that manner with all of the uh, humor and laughter and kind of some of the shit talking is that because a lot of that practice is kind of intertwined with reservation culture and it's kind of intertwined with um hopi culture oh as yeah well. yeah yeah so like you know we we do a lot of teasing i mean our culture is based around teasing so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think that the teasing kind of in a way is a way to um keep people in line and so you know if you have uh, and we've talked about it before the uncles the the mean uncles that are charged with uh, making sure that we're living our lives straight that you know if you're kind of acting you know stupid or you know dumb then they're the ones to call you out publicly but they make it as a joke so yeah yeah that's true i mean like you know uh 
I get teased by my uncles. I get teased by my brothers, sisters. Uh, I mean, but it's all in good fun. It, it's just, I guess it kind of, um, it kind of reminds you like you, you have family out there and that's willing to. And they care about you. Yeah, they care about you through that way. And I know that Bahanas out there don't see it that way. They just like say that. Oh, guys, that's rude. Yeah, that's rude of them to say that. And it's like, fuck that, man. <laughs> It's it's all in good fun until Courtney comes home and skins the coyote. It's Carl. okay. It's okay. She never comes home anyway, so <laughs> we don't have air conditioning out here, and so. <laughs> so today, today's topic. Ah, uh, yes. Today's topic is going to be kind of an interesting one. I think that I know that at the beginning of um, season two, we kind of discussed how we were going to try to talk about more contemporary topics that are kind of more relatable to what's going on today on the reservation. But I think that, you know, when we're kind of brainstorming and thinking about the types of things that we wanted to talk to, the uh, category of music was the one that kind of came up. Yes. And, you know, it's something that both you and I really wanted to do. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> and I think that music is Ooh. such an... Okay. <laughs> Somebody, I'm sorry that somebody they take right Carl away from the soundboard. <laughs> That's our newest sound there. So uh, just, just he's, he's very impressed by just it. yeah. We're very impressed by modern technology. Hopis are actually impressed by a lot of modern technology. So. And so with music, I think that because it's such an influential part of everybody's lifestyles, yes. right? Like not necessarily just natives and reservation lifestyles, but it does play a big part within um, our upbringings. And so talking about music, what are, what are some uh, music genres or types of music that you like growing up as a kid? Uh, you know, when I was a kid, my mom, she used to listen to Shania Twain. The, remember that man, I feel like a woman, you know, man, I feel like a woman, bam, 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 bam. you know, and, and when we go to like uh, Flagstaff or, or, uh, or town, as we call it, you know, she had that blasting in, in our, uh, 19, 1998 Ford Escort or whatever it's called is a, you know, those little wagon ones. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh man, I used to listen to that thing. I, I used to be on top of my lungs, my nine year old lungs. Man, I feel like a woman, you know, singing with my mom, <laughs> not knowing what that the lyrics were. Why, why I'm singing? That. I also have it on good authority that when you were a kid, you used to sing the song uh, "It's Raining Men." <laughs> it's raining man, hallelujah! It's raining man. You know, we you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I made a comment on Facebook uh, several years ago that um, when I sing to myself in the car, I kind of sing like a black woman. So I kind of have that black woman esque voice. I think I sing pretty good. So that's up for debate. <laughs> <laughs> I think that. Well, when I was a kid, and just like you, you know, I think I was influenced, at least in, in my most youngest of years, I was really influenced by what my parents listened to or yeah. what my older sister listened to. And so my parents, they listened to a lot of uh, 50s and 60s, real old school music, uh, yeah. Motown, that type of stuff. So um, we grew up listening to that, a lot of uh, Elvis Presley and uh, even country music from way back in the day, 60s and 70s country is something that we listen to. And then um, with my older sister, they used to listen to like 80s uh, R&B music. Really? So uh, that's some of the music that we used to um, listen to, like Paula Abdul and all that old school music back then. Yeah, I mean, uh, I when I was growing up back in grade school, I didn't really have like a music genre or anything in that nature. It was just like whatever was on the whatever was on 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 the radio, like you know, uh, um, like one of the radio stations that we had was KTNN. Is that still on? Yeah, is it is. That, there's that's still KTNN. KTNN, you know, that was on the bus, on, you know, on the bus ride home. So a lot of that was was just whatever was on there, and it's just a bunch of country music. You know, now I, you know, no offense to anybody out there, but I don't like country anymore. So, and I don't think country likes you either, Carl. <laughs> I don't like country or I don't like uh, reggae. So, but I guess that's probably the case for most kids that, you know, when you're kind of riding around in the vehicle with whomever's driving, you're kind of um, restricted to whatever it is that those folks like to listen to. And then so, you know, like I said, you know, uh, listening to a lot of the old school music that my parents listened to, all like the doo-wop and um, 
that type of music from the 50s and 60s. But I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. I thought that it was really, really good music. And then sometimes you hear it on movies like, you know, Back to the Future, the, the Johnny B. Bad song yeah. that he's singing at the very end of the yeah. movie. Um, that's something that I get really pumped up for because it's a song that I knew growing up. And so that's something that I always would um, sing along with. Yeah. Watching those types of movies. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the uh, when when you grow up, when you when you start to grow up, then you kind of have influence of how you you perceive uh, behind the music in a way, you know, like with, with all the hip hop or R and B or rock and roll, rap, uh, heavy metal, and and everything in between there. And but but Hopi's actually have uh, you know our traditional songs, and you when you're a kid, you're 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 in tune to that. You know, you start singing all the traditional butterfly songs, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you know, even though you don't know what the words are, you just sing oh and I uh, when I yeah uh, when I yeah. You know, you you <laughs> you pretty much just sing whatever's whatever the men are singing. So it's kind of funny because then, you know, like now that as, as an adult, you know, when you, when you do have the choice of what music to listen to, I kind of find myself falling into those same practices that my parents would do, especially after like a big, big dance, right? Because yeah. we, we do audio record a lot of our, our ceremonies. And so like you're saying, yeah. you know, a lot of the Hopi, Hopi songs, the, the Hona jams, I guess, you know, sometimes we used to <laughs> call it, but every time that there was a certain dance that would happen, I would really get annoyed because then my parents, to so listen to it over and over oh, again yeah. on you know driving somewhere like oh <laughs> my god not this again you know as a kid you know you're you're you kind of don't really care about you know your culture or yeah. you know because I, I i just think that you're too young to understand the importance of it or too young to understand you know how important these those types of things are but i know that when i was a kid that i used to get annoyed that you know we'd have to listen to the the butterfly tape 10 times <laughs> <laughs> Especially if we were driving to like Albuquerque or to Phoenix and then hearing that being played over and over again. But I think that, you know, by the time that you did have control over the type of music that you got to listen to, what are some of the, what, what was your choice of music genre and why did you choose what you listened to by the time you could actually choose what you wanted to listen to? <laughs> so every every household probably has Hona Jam's 09 in their in their tape collections, summer, summer, mix, <laughs> summer, Hona Jams, summer, O2. summer, yep, exactly. And it's going to be 02 to 09. <laughs> so if you look in your parents' uh, mix of uh, tapes, there, it's going to be written on there. I promise you. So I guess for you and I, both of you were born, <laughs> both of us were born in 1985. Yeah. So I guess you could say like the spring of 1985, that was the spring of love. Oh, yeah, the spring of love. So I guess for me, when I was influenced, I was influenced into like heavy metal, like uh, like Ozzy Osbourne, Slayer, you know, uh, all the old school like ACDC, every every of those old school rock and roll um, party hits, I guess you could say. What what influenced you to listen to that type of music? I guess I because I hang I hung out with the the cooler crowd. So you know, in grade school, I thought I was I was one of the coolest per- people there. So people in in grade school, you know, back in uh, Eagle's Nest and uh, what was the other school that we went to? Uh, The day school? No, not that one. The other one. Uh, Eagle's Nest. uh, The high school? The high school. The middle school. I don't know. I don't know. That was your pathway. Oh, yeah. That was mine. (laughs) I think I was cooler, so. (laughs) (laughs) I went to school with all the cool natives. You know what? That does kind of explain a lot because over at the day school, I think I really started uh, listening to my own music around probably fifth and sixth grade. Yeah. But even then, it was music that was influenced by my friends. And so down at the day school, we used to listen to a lot of gangster rap. We used to <laughs> listen to like rap. West Side Connection, Ice Cube, Tupac, The Notorious, B.I.G. No Limit was uh, kind of really popular back then, <laughs> Master P. And it's funny because then, you know, I, I don't know if you were the same, but for like a lot of us, you know, when uh, you would listen to music, you would have your headphones on. But you'd be singing, you know, the songs at, yeah. at the top of your lungs. And then so, you know, you're in fifth grade, sixth grade. I don't know what age that equates to 10, 11 years old, but then, you know, you're singing, wake up, wake up. It's the first of the month. Bone Thugs and oh, Harmony. Oh, Bone and- Thugs and Harmony. Man, that was in every <laughs> every 1985's, uh, you know, birth record there. And and so, you know, you're, you're a little kid and, then, <laughs> and, and you don't really know, you know, no. what, what you're singing about. And so you're singing about, you know, uh, killings and drugs and... <laughs> 
uh, talking about big booty mamas and, you know, that type of thing. And so, you know, now that I think back on it, you know, it, it's pretty funny. But then I guess like what you're saying that you listened to a lot of metal and then you went to school on the Navajo side, yeah. on the Navajo um, in Tuba, that uh, when I did make that transition from the day school over to uh, the junior high school, Tuba City Public School, yeah. I, it's what I really remember it was that a lot of the Navajos listened to heavy metal. Yeah. This paid sponsorship was paid for by Justin Villarreal. Nurturing Indigenous Intelligence is a grassroots organization whose mission is to assist our Indigenous students in their pursuit of education. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up with upcoming distributions. That's what they were all about. And, you know, all those Hopis that came over from, from our side, we were all about, you know, rap, rap and, and hip hop. Yeah. And, you know, we were trying to be thugs. <laughs> And then, you know, all, all your crew, you know, you guys were, were the crows dressed in black all day, every day. And so, yeah, I thought we were, we were the, we were the cooler than you guys. So <laughs> As I look at these Hopis over there listening to their gangster rap and pull up your pants. God damn it. <laughs> and so to prepare for um, this, this episode, I, I did what I normally do. I posed the, the quest, the sticker question. On Instagram, asking our followers, you know, what what do you think the most popular music of the reservations are? And it was pretty consistent what, what, with what we thought that they were, in that a lot of the response was uh, rap, hip hop, reggae music, country music, and then your music, uh, metal music. Yeah. Um, which, for the record, I thought that when I first heard that stuff, I thought it was just noise. Really? Yeah. Like you know, you drop something and it makes a real loud bang. Yeah. That's yeah. what I thought that that was. Man, your ears aren't tuned as well as mine then. <laughs> <laughs> and so I say, and so I think that those were uh, really the popular genres of of the reservation. And, yeah. You know, I I don't necessarily think that it's for any particular reason just maybe because you know that's kind of the i guess the part of popular culture that just kind of influ infiltrated onto the reservation within our ears but i definitely think that that type of music had an influence on us growing yeah. up and i think that it had influence in terms of like how we dressed oh yeah how we talked to each other yeah how we kind of um organized ourselves see when i uh because i used to have a lot of navajo friends um before having hopi friends and um when uh some of my hopi friends came aboard in during uh middle school aboard the carl express uh, <laughs> aboard the carl express aboard the sinking ship we call the uss carl <laughs> no but uh I, it was it was i guess i kind of got influenced by them because they listened to like hip-hop and rap and uh, and w during the nineties, uh, you know, that's when like the grunge metal kind of hit and, uh, they used to listen to like, uh, like what was that, uh, rap, rap rock or whatever it's called. And, um, like kid rock, like kid rock and, and really, yeah. And so like, you know, when, when they were influenced, they said that, Hey, you know, they dressed a certain way. So they, they all wore baggy pants with like heavy metal t-shirts going on but like, you know, having that, the chain going down and it was like the Jinko jeans and stuff. <laughs> and I wasn't influenced enough to, uh, uh, to wear or anything like that. I was like, man, but that's so cool. I want to wear those Jinko jeans, you know, those, you know, the pants that you can probably wear like with three people inside of the pant leg. And, um, I, uh, you know, and one of my friends, he said that, Hey, why don't you just wear your quas pants? <laughs> and I'm like, why? And he's like, yeah, cause, uh, I wear my quas pants and you just tie a string and it'll fit it cause it looks baggy. And I'm like, okay. So being a Esau, you know, I, I went home the next day I got, uh, stole one of uh, Kwa's pants and which was what his work pants and uh, at the time Kwa was a bus driver for the uh, for the um, the the middle school there uh -huh. and in tuba. in tuba and he was my bus driver <laughs> and uh, he he immediately uh, called me out in front of everybody on the bus <laughs> he said that why are you wearing my pants <laughs> And I'm like, Qua, shut up, Qua. Shut up, Qua. I'm trying to look cool here. I'm 12 years old, Qua. <laughs> trying to get a girlfriend. I'm qua. trying to get a girlfriend, Qua. I need your pets. <laughs> I need your pets. <laughs> 
No, I, I think I think that that's really a, a good segue into, you know, kind of talking about um, influencing culture of, yeah. of, of the music on the reservation, because, you know, we've talked about, um, I, I guess, reservation gangs to, to quite an extent on the podcast. And, you know, of course, a lot of that came from um, the, ra- the rap and the hip hop culture. Oh, yeah. And so, like you were saying, you know, like some of the, the clothes that you used to wear or some of the other kids that what they used to wear back then. Yeah. Um, so I guess in terms of like a res gangster, what, what's the uniform of a res gangster? Uh, well, like just the same thing. Baggy pants. Uh, dickies. Dickies. Yep. Yeah. All stars, Chucks. <laughs> yep. A lot of them wore the the shell toes, the Adidas shell toes. Um, a lot of Nike. Oh yeah. And then um, flannel. Yeah. Remember a lot of flannel. Oh yes, a lot of flannel. And that was always the one article of clothing that I really thought you could steal from your Guas closet was the flannel. Was the because flannel? Uh, flannel is actually a pretty popular um, wear out here on the reservation, especially amongst Hopis. Yeah. And so for whatever reason, you know, a lot of our Hopi men, they do wear a lot of flannel and you see it down at, um, down at the fields or especially during the winter time when people are, you know, going to each other's homes to, for whatever, or you see them in the Kiva. And so that was kind of uh, a a unique article of clothing that I thought could be transparent between, you know, your guas or your dads and then the gangsters that your cousin gangsters (laughs) that were wearing those same things too. And then I think that at least in my experience with with the hip hop culture, I think that especially back in the nineties. Yeah, I don't know if you remember back in the nineties. That's when they had the the big. Um, I think the really the big influence of the Crips and the Bloods back ah, then. Ah, yes. And so a lot of our village kids, you know, they were. Um, and at that point, you know, you got to choose. You know, yeah. Do you want to be yeah. a Blood or a Crip? Do you want to be blue or or do you want to be red? And that was like the the pinnacle peak of. Uh, of all 90s kids, basically. And then so, you know, a lot of us, we had, well, I, I, I didn't do it myself, but from what I witnessed, a lot of my friends yeah. and, you know, relatives, they, they had the, the rags, the new rags, the, the red or blue, and they were in the back pocket, depending on which side <laughs> you chose. They had them um, either to the left or to the right side. And then a lot of people, they had the, the plain blue or the plain red hats yeah depending on which you chose and then i don't know if you remember the belts the belts that were either solid blue or solid red they didn't buckle into um in the front like a a traditional belt does but it kind of had that little slit thing where it kind of goes one direction and then you pull it out the opposite direction to tighten it oh yeah it was just real solid in front little silver silver buckle yeah and man i thought those were cool like (laughs) i bought mine at the uh flea market down in uh where was it uh in phoenix phoenix yep at greyhound park at greyhound park and mine had the initials on there so had a old school (laughs) letter c on there and i thought i was cool i thought those were really cool too and then (laughs) i think another part of the wear too was the real high uh knee socks yeah socks that went almost up to your knees yeah white yeah um the Indigenous Design Collab are Indigenous designers collaborating to bring creative people and ideas closer together through education, communication, and creative expression. They explore, cultivate, and indigenize space. Indigenous Design Collab is having a call for entry starting September 1st for digital artwork for their second annual design show. The theme is Rise to Vote. For more information, they can be found on Facebook or Instagram. And so that was kind of some of the the wear that a lot of us used to wear, or at least in the, those in the reservation, trying to be hard, trying to be yeah. you know, gangsters. And then I think just depending on which color you chose, that you know, if you were if you were a Crip and you know rocking the blue, you were always wearing like L.A. hats, blue L.A. hats. And then if you were uh, uh, Bloods, then you're wearing the the Chicago Bulls hats, <laughs> and you know other types of sports teams that yeah. uh, co- coordinate yeah. with those colors. And so, like, you know, with all of that, I mean, I wasn't influenced into, like, any gang culture because... Because uh, you were a metalhead. Because I was a metalhead. And I was like, you know, Ooh, look at those guys there. <laughs> so I can see their Lomo. <laughs> I was like, what's the brown stain in the back, Tommy? <laughs> Says last Tuesday... <laughs> Well, I mean, I think for sure that, that, you know, that's definitely influenced by, by rap. Because like I said, back then, you know, we were listening to, to like that, like, like gangster rap. Yeah. It wasn't, um, I guess, you know, kind of more the radio hip hop or kind of the more, uh, I guess, um, a little bit more aligned with, with, um, appropriateness. 
in terms of what they were talking about. And so, you know, I guess aside from, from, you know, wanting to be in gangs, I think that influenced us in other ways. Oh yeah. And then I think that, you know, and it's kind of a unique, a unique thing because then, you know, hip hop rap is mostly, um, sung or rapped by African American folks. And so, you know, um, I think that it kind of created this dynamic where in a way we kind of want it to be black. Oh yeah. And do you know anybody who raps in the Hopi world? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Weird. I don't know anybody who raps in the Hopi world. Yaiva? You haven't heard of Yaiva? Yaiva. I, uh, no, I'm thinking of that one. Uh, what was that guy's name? That The, the reggae guy. Casper. Casper. There, he, was, there was a rap guy named Yaiva. Yaiva. I, I don't think I've ever heard of him before. I think I bought one of his albums. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard of him before. So that's actually news to me. Weird. And and so, well, it, it's funny that you mentioned that because then I, you know, even though it didn't really influence me to dress like a gangster, I guess. Yeah. But it still influenced me in a way because then now, you know, when I look back thinking about high school, like some of the clothes that I used to wear, yeah. I used to wear like Vocal. Yeah. Uh, which was uh, created by, <laughs> by Nelly. I don't know if you remember Nelly. And then we used to wear uh, Fat Farm. I used to wear a lot of Fat Farm. Um, Sean John, Sean, Sean, John Sean John's, I know, by, yeah, by P Diddy, and <laughs> we used to wear a lot of Echo, Echo, we used to wear a lot of Echo, clothes. yeah. And so I think that you know that was kind of the difference is that you know even when we tr- we transitioned into high school, which was like the early two thousands, yeah, I think that you still had this group of students uh, or at least a uh, Hopi kids, yeah, that still listened to like real hardcore gangster rap. And I think that a lot of the people that they used to listen to were, were some that I wasn't really uh, familiar with. But then, like, for myself, I still listen to hip-hop. I still listen to rap. But it was kind of more, um, I guess, popular artists. Like, I used to listen to a lot of Fabulous by the time I got into high school. I used to listen to... Um, I think that's when New York hip-hop kind of became more prevalent. So, like, 50 Cent, uh, G-Unit... And then I used to listen to a lot of Southern hip hop too, like Cash Money, No Limit. Yeah. Um, I think I used to listen to a lot of Lil Wayne before he even got really famous in BG, Juvenile. And so that was kind of some of the music that I listened to. And, you know, based off of that, that's kind of how I used to dress. See, I, my, uh, my kias, um, they used to stay with us uh, sometimes during the summer. And their music, because they're all girls, basically, uh-huh. they, and they they love girl music. So uh-huh. Mariah Carey, TLC, you know, all the all the R and B music, all R and B music. And so I was kind of influenced in that too. So I was, you know, uh, don't go chasing what you know, singing at night while listening to heavy metal. I was like, <laughs> don't go chasing waterfall, you know, all the. And it's like I gotta I gotta listen to some heavy metal music, you know, like I gotta grab. You know, get this, uh, you know, TLC off of me right now. <laughs> you know what? You bringing that up, that kind of brought up this kind of uh, funny dynamic. And, you know, I don't, I don't know if that, that culture was present, like, here on the main part of the yeah. reservation. But I know that where I grew up, out in Tuba, in Munkapi area, like, all your friends, they were all gangsters. They are all thugs. And so, you know, they were all listening to all this hardcore gangster stuff, NWA, Tupac, Westside Connection, Dr. Dre. Yeah. All of that. But then if you were a guy... And you wanted, like, you didn't tell them you listened to R&B music. Yeah. Because if you if they found out you listened to, like, Brandy or Monica yeah. back then, like, they'd make fun of you. They'd make fun of you and, you know, basically call you call you a woman. Yeah, no kidding. And, and so, you know, I thought that that was kind of interesting because then, you know, I, I mean, it, it was kind of unfortunate in a way, too, because I did like R&B music back yeah. then. I did want to listen to it openly and freely. But then you're afraid of ridicule from your friends, so you kind of kept that, you know, on the DL, and you only did that when you were by yourself at home. <laughs> and so, like, you know, when you when you actually grow up, then you can listen to all of these '90s music without getting ridiculed, exactly. you know? Because because exactly. I like Lauren Hill and Monica and Will Smith and No Doubt and you know Backstreet Boys. You know, when when but when Backstreet Boys came out in the 1990s, you know. <laughs> You you didn't want to uh, you didn't want to uh, uh, be part of that whole thing like that because that was all for preppy people basically. So, <laughs> and then now you, you're grown up. You're like everybody <laughs> in the car ride at uh, going to work, and then your kids are looking at you like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> I was like, "My dad's a loser." <laughs> 
And, and so, well, I guess, you know, like hip hop rap, that's not the only music that um, influences uh, Hopis, I guess, from the African American yeah. uh, society yeah. in which they create it. And then the other, the other big one that's really big out here on the Hopi reservation, which I, 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 I guess I can understand to an extent, but not so much, is reggae. Reggae. I mean, the reggae hit back in the early, or actually later 90s. Well, I, it was always influenced in the 80s, basically, I believe, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. But then it really took off again in the in the, in the the later 90s and early 2000s. Yeah. And, you know, we had, like, reggae parties out here. Hopis love reggae for love some reggae. reggae. I mean, I have no idea why Hopis love reggae for some reason. You know, I, I think it's because of, like, the... All of the smoking that they did. I, you know what, I, I've, I've had that thought in my head often. Like, why is it that Hopis like reggae so yeah. much? Yeah, and I really think it's for two reasons. I think that one, it's because like the underlying message of reggae, uh, at least the traditional message of reggae, is pretty consistent with Hopi perspective, like a peace. And, yeah, you know, peace, love, love and, and respect know, or something. I don't know. Balance of the universe and yeah. that type of thing. So I've always thought that that was kind of a message. That um, really, I guess, resonated with us out here. Yeah. And then I think the other part, too, was the influence of, of the weed culture. The getting oh, high culture. Yeah. See, I never did, you know, I never did anything like that. So I wasn't, I wasn't influenced in, in that particular way to say that I'm going to listen to a certain amount, certain, certain music that, you know, influences my, whatever my, my thing is, uh-huh. like with weed and stuff. You know, I I smoked lapu for some reason, and that's the reason why I'm a metalhead. All metalheads smoke lapu every uh, for, now and then. For the non-speakers, <laughs> what does lapu mean? It's just the uh, that what is that uh, like like wood 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 chips or wood shavings or whatever. It's it's the leftover, <laughs> it's the, the residuals yeah, of the wood that's wood. on the ground. <laughs> And it's like that stringy bits. I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's like, like the fibers of the the wood. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, you know, aside from just reggae, well, I think hip hop kind of had that influence too on our reservation yeah. folks in terms of like getting high. Um, but I, I think, I mean, I guess, you know, regardless of what genre of music that you listen to that, you know, that was uh, something that people did yeah. was, was smoke weed. And, you know, it's kind of funny because like that, like, you know, growing up on the reservation and, you know, we talked a lot about it, kind of the, the naughty things that we did yeah. as kids in those first couple of episodes of Growing Up Res. But when you move out to the city and then you start to intermingle with, you um, urban natives that yeah. kind of grew up in the urban, yeah. urban culture and you know kind of compare stories that um a lot of what what their 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 um, experiences are are completely different to us and so like for us i know that a lot of reservation people start especially hopis yeah started smoking weed at very young ages i mean there are a lot of kids that you know, during my my youth years, like they started like at a young age and stuff. So, uh, you know, like all of these all of the influences, it's not through um, uh, like uh, it's not through it's not through what what we listen to during the past or anything like that. But it's it's what we kind of see uh, on TV, like MTV. Music videos. Yeah, music videos. Or even the music. Yeah. Like, cause, you know, like, it's, it's like that for me too. Cause, like, you know, if you're listening to podcasts, for example. Yeah. If you're uh, listening to a podcast about a certain topic, it kind of encourages you to want to experience whatever that podcast is talking about. Yeah. So if it's a podcast about food and you're listening to it, it's like, oh man, I, I want to go eat now. Or yeah. I want to go, you know, try something different. And so when you're listening to music that's talking about getting blazed, then it kind of makes you want to go and get blazed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, speaking of, uh, of like getting, getting blazed, <laughs> getting blazed. <laughs> you know, the skater skater punk kind of deal is like one of the biggest influence in in Hopi and Navajo culture as well. Too mm-hmm. is that you know they wrote, wrote uh, etnies and they wore etnies and what was the other ones uh, like. Uh, uh, that's like that's basically what's coming to mind. Just the etnies, 
And speaking of that, we actually have our first sponsor here that is uh, sponsoring part of uh, our episode here. Mm -hmm. And our sponsor is the same owner of uh, Nakwetsuveni Skateboarding, Delvin Palolinma. And so Lolma Detailing Incorporated, a Hopi-owned automotive detailing company, which provides services from exterior and interior detailing from wash to wax to window and paint correction and ceramic coating as well as headlight restoration and so much more. You can find them on Instagram at Lolma Detailing Incorporated and also to book appointments. Lolma Detailing is located in the Phoenix area. All right. So like, you know, with that, you know, he, he I guess, you know, he, he does a lot of the... Uh, the detailing. The detail. I uh-huh. never knew that. Uh-huh. Weird. Yeah. All right. Jack of all trades. Nice. Well, you know, what... When we were talking about like the the whole music scene and the whole skater music, and there was a there was always genres in the school that you were at. Like you know, you had the punks, then you had like the skaters, and you had like, they kind of defined the yeah. I, I guess the the clubs that you yeah you belong to yeah. And and see, I was I think I was like neutral, <laughs> like I didn't fit in anywhere. I was just like that. Hey, I want to fit in with you guys for a while, like a leech, and. uh <laughs> I well, wear you, you, uh, you dressed like a leech. You're <laughs> all black all day, every day. I wear my quaz pants for you guys for a week. <laughs> so, and you know, I, I don't think I was any influenced with, with any type of grouping, I guess you could say. It was just more or less like, you know, I'll fit in somewhere down the line to see where I see where I go. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I guess, you know, talking about the weed culture, but then, you know, talking about the other two most popular genres that um, that we think, you know, kind of influence the reservation, um, country music. Ah, country and, music. And so I think the thing about country music is that for most of the radio stations that you caught on the yeah. reservation, they almost all played country music. Yeah. What was that? Uh, what was that one one genre that they uh, like the, the two step? Remember the just the single beat, doot, doot, doot. you know the the country music like uh, uh, Sunfire and uh, what was the other band? Uh, Asus um, Wild. Yeah, like no, <laughs> like the Res bands that are out the here. The Hopi Clansmen. The Hopi Clansmen. You know they're simple beats. Yeah, is that like influenced like through um, like country music? I have no idea. Yeah, I never listened to their stuff, so. <laughs> you're you're not a country guy. No, I'm not a country guy. But, you know, like for me, like country music, like, you know, like we were saying from the very beginning is that that's something that you always listen to on car rides or uh, yeah. regardless of wherever you were going. And so I think what country music, what that really speaks to reservation people is because the underlying theme of country music is like uh, rural living. Yeah. Um, hard Hardworking life, because, you know, I think a lot of the country music, it talks about you know, being uh, farmers or yeah. ranchers. Yeah. And a lot of Hopis are farmers and some of them are ranchers. And so I think that kind of aligns the lifestyles. And then the other two uh, big components of country music that I think we've all experienced is heartbreak and alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, you hear those um, those themes real heavy in country. And for me, you know, because I'm a lot older, I'm, obviously I'm the oldest that I've been in, in my entire life. Yeah. That, you know, you're working hard, not only, you know, doing your nine to five, but then you're at your fields, especially during this time of the year, you know, living that that hard lifestyle. And then when you put the, the Luke Bryan on or the Jason Aldean, <laughs> Now I'm going to get crap for that because <laughs> everybody out here knows who King is. King? And King is uh, George. King George? Mm-hmm. Who's King George? George Strait. Oh, George Strait. Did you know I met, well, I didn't really meet George Strait. It was um, George Burns. <laughs> <laughs> same difference, right? They have the no, same name? No, 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 no. Uh, well, anyway, it was in, it was in, uh, <laughs> It was in Las Vegas, and I was probably what, maybe ten years old, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so got um, we used to go on trips to Las Vegas, and I love Circus Circus at Las Vegas. And we were riding the elevator in one of the the hotels in Las Vegas. I forgot what what hotel we were staying at, and George Burns was in his wife beater, and uh, you know, just riding the elevator. I didn't know what he was doing there, and. Um, down on the bottom, there was uh, George Strait that was signing autographs, and um, 
uh, we were going to go over there, but there were a bunch, bunch of white girls that were surrounding him. So we didn't, we didn't go over and he was, he was right by a piano. I remember yeah. it was right by a piano. Yeah. So I, you know, that was like one of my memorable moments as like, yeah, I was, I was about 500 yards away from George Strait and he didn't know it. <laughs> Dene Mahapi Arts is a modern art made with traditional values. Dene is involving artists who is in innovative through her artwork while incorporating contemporary modern trends and bright colors being the base of her work. Hopi traditional elements is her main focus, giving her artwork an intricate finish. Though she's living in today's modern society, she paints meaning and value of traditional designs to showcase and symbolizes her upbringing out on Hopi. She specializes in customized painting, painted earrings to her colorful bright canvas paintings and much more. Danae can be found on Instagram at Mahapi Arts, where you can find and support her one-of-a-kind art pieces. So moving on. <laughs> I, and you'd, you'd be more expert in this, you know, because I, I do think that, you know, well, maybe country doesn't necessarily influence res culture because yeah. in a way res culture is country culture. Yeah. It's just, you know, it, cre it created itself differently. And, you know, I don't know a lot of Hopi cowboys. I know that there are some, but I think growing up where we did close to Tuba, you yeah. know, th there were a lot of Navajo cowboys. Oh, yeah, there's a lot that, of Navajo That you cow saw a lot of them, you know, were uh, riding horses and tending to their cattle and all, all of that stuff. Um, but I guess you could be the one that talks about, you know, uh, influences of heavy metal uh, on yeah, the that, reservation. See, and I don't know what the culture is on heavy metal aside from <laughs> wearing black. Yeah. So like, you know, when, when in my high school years, um, we had a group of friends and, uh, we used to listen to heavy metal music. Like, uh, we used to go into harder, harder music, like Opeth, Slayer, you know, all of these different types of, uh, subgenres like black metal, heavy metal, mm -hmm. death metal. And, uh, and it was, it was, it was influenced by like, you know, trying to keep, uh, trying to keep an underground kind of scene trying to break away from like all of the, the new stuff or like, you know, trying to break away from all of the popular on the backstreet. Yeah. Boys. Like the backstreet boys and everything. NSYNC. <laughs> and I used to wear black. Do you remember that band? 98 degrees. Ah, 98 degrees. That was like the, the unpopular backstreet boys there. <laughs> the rejects, <laughs> the rejects part. So like, you know, my friends, we used to wear black all the time and we used to, and that was, I guess that was kind of the influence of growing my hair out as well too, because like, you know, you, we want it to mosh. Not because you want it to be traditional. I didn't want it to be traditional. Oh, screw that, man. I wanted to mosh. You know, I wanted to mosh, you wanted to get into mosh pits and you, I thought those were cool. I, I thought those were cool back in the day. <laughs> and then now when you're seeing it on camera, you're like, Ooh, I, that's not, that's not safe there. <laughs> It's like those kids are gonna break something. <laughs> oh, well, you kind of brought this up at kind of the beginning of the episode, but um, I, you know, traditional Hopi music. Uh huh. How how would you describe tradi traditional Hopi music? Is there traditional Hopi music? Like uh, like Hona songs, or I mean, yeah. uh, what category should we put that in? Uh, no, like uh, w describe it. Like, what is it? It's just Hona Jams. <laughs> I don't know. You probably can find that on YouTube. <laughs> Everything's on YouTube. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I mean, I guess, you know, Hopi music is like folk music. I was like, I guess you could put that into like that category of folk. Yeah, it's kind of tough to describe because then, you know, like that, like if you're speaking to somebody who's not familiar with, with your culture yeah. or, or even with native culture, because usually it's going to be, you know, outside of um, native folks that are going to be asking those questions. Because I think that for the most part, most native peoples, that we all have uh, ways of singing and that type of thing. And so um, I think we all kind of understand that that's our music. Like, yeah, we, we sing it ourselves. Yeah. And there's not much of uh, the way of instruments there are, but it's not played in the same manner as, um, I guess, American music or contemporary music. Yeah. And so what are some traditional instruments that Hopis have? Like the Aya, the Pusukpi, you know, the uh, turtle shell, uh, the bells. Uh, I think that's pretty much all. 
if you kind of categorize it in that in that section there but you know we we as hopis are very limited with our instruments oh like the flute uh-huh yeah like the flute as well too that's probably the closest thing to um i guess bahana instruments yeah is our flute and then maybe our pusukinpi yeah too as well which is a drum do any of those have significances or you know a reason why they make the noises that they do uh, because it brings people together, makes people dance, and it makes my guys shake their butts. <laughs> when I when I beat that drum. <laughs> but but anyway, I think it I think it's because it it's a unique sound. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a very unique sound, and so Hopi has uh, a very unique way of singing and uh, chanting. I guess you could say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and it's it's about it's about bringing. Uh, you know the spirits to together with the Hopi people, and to bring joy and to bring uh, you know peace within within the the Hopi village there and the universe and the universe, and so like you know that I guess that's the the whole reason why we we have these types of instruments. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that another reason why we have these instruments, I guess, is for for any other reason as any type of uh, music uh, or genre of music is that you know to keep the beat, yeah, to keep the beat of the singing. To help with the beat of the dance, of how the dances go, whatever the dance moves are, as, yeah. as you mentioned, yeah. uh, keep making our kids shake their their backsides. Yeah. And um, what about songs, Hopi songs? Ah, how hope- would you describe that if somebody were to ask you, what are Hopi songs? So, what if, do those sing about? So, if you if you kind of give it a broad description of what Hopi songs are, I guess you could say. That Hopi songs are sung with uh, like the rain, basically. Every every Hopi song incorporates the the life bringing or the the renewal of life or or like you know the rains, uh, and that's that's uh, that's what basically what all Hopi songs are. So, I mean, there we don't sing about like you know, uh, you know like death or <laughs> we, we don't, don't sing about sing about the crypts and the bloods. <laughs> Getting blades. We don't sing about somebody else's girlfriend uh, breaking up with a man, or <laughs> we don't sing about getting drunk at the honky tonk. <laughs> so I think that's all in broad spectrum of what Hopi songs are. The thing that I like about Hopi songs, and you know, something that I kind of share with everybody is that you know, Hopis we like to sing. Yeah, singing is a big uh, part of Hopi culture, and yeah. we do it. Um, with almost everything, you know, yeah. the old people, their lessons are that when you're doing work, that it helps it to go along a little bit better when you're singing. And so, you know, we have all these songs and some of them aren't necessarily related to ceremony, that some of them are just general songs that you sing. Like the women, they have their corn grinding songs yeah. that they sing while they grind corn. Um, men have other types of songs that they have. Children have songs that kind of teach them lessons of life and and so forth. So um, those are kind of some of the things that I like to think about in regards to Hopi songs. Ah, so I believe that's uh, it for our sponsors. Or do we have uh, or do we have one more? I think that's it. I think that's for our sponsors. So, but I do have some good some shout outs. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay. Well, go ahead and lay it on me. So before we close today. And, you know, I I really do enjoy doing this, like Carl said on the last episode, but definitely a big thank you to everybody who has been listening to us and promoting us. And um, for those of you that have been asking, our store will go up very soon. And Strong Ones, who is a sponsor of this podcast, has been generous enough to house us in their uh, Shopify store. But a big shout out to them and then big shout out to supporters like uh, Noel Oyahoma and Crystal Hanani. Crystal Honani. Ah, yeah. And, uh, you know, on, uh, I believe that we do have some uh, Anchor subscriptions as well, too, right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think we do. Uh, I think we do have some sponsorships that are that are in here, uh, right here. Uh, Michelle Holden. Michelle Holden. Well, thank you. Thank you for your, uh, your, your contribution and everything. And then real quick, too, another shout out to our sponsors, Strong Ones, Terraform Development, um, Indigenous Squared, Four Time Studios, and Danae Mahapi Arts. Thank you guys for making this happen, actually. Thank, thank you for keeping us on the air here. So Thank you very much. And shout out to our boy again, Millard Goanyama and uh, Delvin Palalanma. All right. Well, thank you again, guys. 
Uh, you, you are huge supporters of that. And if you guys want to support us, please go to uh, anchor.fm slash cjpodcast85 to become a monthly supporter. Or you can uh, you know write us at cjpodcast85 at gmail.com and if you want to sponsor us. And don't um, forget, if you're listening to this on YouTube, please like and subscribe links, to our YouTube yep, channel. Links in the description below, and please uh, share as much as you can. Thank you, everybody, for uh, listening in. My name is Carl, and this is my best friend, uh, J-Man. Thank you for listening to uh, our podcast. So long.